Hey guys, Forbidden here, bringing you round two, the second game between Stuck Pixel and Merfolk and me on Blue Eye Tempo. So, Stuck Pixel decides to mulligan, which is obviously nice for me. Um, I'm going to keep this hand. So, I've got Tundra, Aether Vial opening. I've also got a Swords. Um, the Wastelands aren't that great, but I'd rather have that than uh, mulligan. So, I'm keeping. So we both open with Aether Vials. In this situation, Blue Eye Tempo has a pretty big advantage. Especially since he took a mulligan, so... You know, more benefit. Okay, um, that's actually very significant, the fact that he played a Muta Vault. So that means I can um, play a Wasteland and then be able to pull a Wayfarer trick against my opponent. If he had only played a Basic Island in that situation, um, I would be, you know, I mean, I, I would still have the advantage, but I wouldn't be as, um, you know, as far ahead. And so the standstill from him is really gutsy, and I comment about that. Um, I think it's the wrong play. Um, you know, especially given what I have in my hand. The Muta Vault's going nowhere, and then I'll have an Aether Vial against his Aether Vial. And then... Uh, Blue White Tempo almost always uh, will win that exchange, especially when he's got like three cards in hand. So keep in mind, I'm not wastelanding him, especially since he played the the standstill. He has n really nothing to do with his mana, and so um, I violin the Wayfarer and then wasteland trick him. Well, actually, since he played an island, I don't have to Wayfarer trick him. Um, I could just shoot his Meteor Ball. He probably should have swung me uh, with the Muta Vault and the Curse Catcher. I mean, my one drops are Mother of Runes and um, Weather Wayfair, and neither one of those is going to block either Curse Catcher or Muta Vault. So he could have cashed in for a few extra damage. Okay, so now he chooses to swing, but um, now I have an Aether Vial at two counters. And so, um, it, it just eats the Curse Catcher. Actually, if I had any any two-drop in the deck, he'd be really screwed. So, um, a Sarah Avenger kills it. Um, uh, Knight of the White Orchid kills it. Um, you know, Jotun Grunt kills it, but I, I probably wouldn't violent a Jotun Grunt just because, you know, it wouldn't live. And I'd actually rather have a Jordan Grunt than his Curse Catcher. I don't really care that he has a Curse Catcher. But, you know, Fathom Seer even kills it. Um, you know, everything kills it. I think if he has a Lord, it survives the Fathom Seer. But um, even with a Lord, pretty much everything in the deck will kill his 1-1 one -one swinging in. And so, um, you know, that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, so he has the Lord, but the one with the useless ability. The one that um, he can't activate under um, under a uh, under the standstill. Okay, so he, he, swings me, uh, he swings me for two. And so I'm thinking, you know, I could block with the Sarah Avenger and then trade my Avenger for his Lord. But I'd rather trade a Jotun Grunt for his Lord. I'm almost positive that he has a second Lord, otherwise he wouldn't have made that play. Okay, so he says okay, and concedes his Lord. Um, which puts me in, a, in obviously really good shape. It was also probably a mistake to play the island, because that means I, I get two... Um, That means I get I get two land out of it, so it really helps me thin my deck, and then uh, actually I'll, I'll get three land out of it at least because I'll just play out um, the flooded strand. You know, so here I'm going to go on the offensive. 
Um, he's only got two cards in hand, so I'm really safe doing this. And so he, he only took four, which is why I'm uh, pointing the Sarah Vendor at his head. Um, so he took seven. At this point, I'm actually thinking um, I, I could, uh, you know, sack all of my land during my upkeep, save my Joden Grunt, and then I'll have Fatal with a Vile Densera Avenger. But um, I think I chicken out, and then I go for the more conservative play, which is just Vile and the Sarah Avenger. Yeah, so I just sacrificed the grunt. I could have, um, you know, sacked all my land and then uh, wayfared, you know, at least two back. But I think that this is the safer play. You know, just went from the air. Either way, you know, he's on a two-turn clock, and then he doesn't have anything that can catch him back up in this game. Okay. So he breaks his own standstill to Echoing Truth. I think he, he really has to at this point. Um, but with the Ether Vial, I'm going to replay two of them. And so he's back on the same two-turn clock. And he has one card in hand against my, like, 12. And so, uh, I mean, I'm going to have to discard in this situation. Um, at least discard two. But, you know, I can just pitch lands. Um, you know, lands aren't a big deal. And I've got a ton of threats. So, you know, two Sarah Avengers come in. Um, I don't know what I should pitch. I, I should probably pitch a Fathom Seer. Not really going to use that. Um, and then two land. Okay, yeah, and I do just that. Okay, so he doesn't get to do anything with his turn. Um, he might have he might have wanted to swing with the with the uh, Rejure, I'm not going to block it, even though I could block it, and he probably doesn't have another Lord, and then he would just be, um, you know, just kill it. Um, he could probably get away with that, because I'm not, I wouldn't take the risk of blocking it uh, with the Sarah Vendor at this point of the game. So I'm playing really conservatively. And then I close this one out. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you for the uh, next match. Bye-bye.